Hey everybody, this is Ori from AstroWeb, and today I'm going to cover one of the most basic things you need to know about Magento, which is how to enable Magento to send out emails to your customers. Uh, emails are called in Magento transactional emails, and what it does is Magento needs another system to send out emails on its behalf because Magento is just an e-commerce store. It's a shop but it's not a mail server, so it doesn't know how to deliver emails. But when it needs to send out its transactional email, so for a transactional email is orders, invoice, shipments, refunds, uh, customer registration, forgot password, abandoned carts, anything that is a transactional email, some email that needs to send out automatically, it needs a server to send on its behalf. So there's really three ways you can actually send out an email. Uh, number one is on your server, if your IT or your your whoever's setting up your server sends up a an actual mail server, that's the least popular way that you can do it. But if you have shared hosting things like that, you might have it already. Maybe your cPanel, for example. The second way is you actually have an SMTP account. You have an email address. You have just like you log into your computer to an email address. You have your username, which is the full email address. For example, sales at your domain and your password. So that's that's a most likely uh, one of the more popular ways. And the third method you have is using a third party system to send out on your behalf. Um, so we're gonna make another uh, video on that called, uh, for example, for SendGrid. Uh, and we made one, I believe, for, for Mandrill uh, before. But this video is gonna focus on the most popular one, which is called SMTP. Um, and uh, the SendGrid one, we're gonna do another video which we'll link as well. Um, so it really depends. So just wanna make a small correction. The popular one for small businesses usually is a SMTP, and for bigger businesses usually they use the third party, so it depends. Um, so I'm gonna explain uh, what I did to show you a little bit about this example, and if you have any questions, let me know, okay? So first of all, uh, what I did is I found I need to install an actual SMTP extension. So the one I use in this example is the Mage Plaza one. There's many others that are out there. Sometimes we use the Amnesty one. Uh, Mage Plaza one is the free one. Amnesty is not. There's a lot of uh, different third parties that make them. Uh, most of them cost money. Uh, this one works pretty well. So what I did is I asked our developer to install it. Obviously, I went here, I added to cart, and I downloaded it, and um, then our developer actually installed it onto the server. You can use Composer, or you can use uh, your code itself, okay? So once I installed it, uh, now in my backend, I actually have a section here called SMTP, um, and there's a configuration. It's really simple. Okay, so what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to set up the configuration. I'm going to do a few things right now. Okay, so first of all, uh, when you install it new, you need to get a license. So you can put in, you're going to be able to put in your uh, name and email, and it's going to get a license for you. Okay, uh, so that's just a simple thing. You register, and they just verify that you can use it on your domain, for example, on my uh, test domain. And the settings are really simple. All you do is you enable it right here, enable um, and you go down below and you set up your SMTP configuration. So if you have an email address and a password, you're gonna need to get from your provider your, their actual information. So for example, I use Office 365 as my email address, the one I can just log in and have my, for example, my email and my password. Uh, but if you use Gmail, you use your own uh, company SMTP server, you're just gonna get this information. The host name is basically uh, you know, the domain itself where you get it. Uh, and then you're going to configure the port and the protocol. Now, every single provider has different information, right? So you're going to need to get that from your provider. If it's a main provider, you just Google it and you type in SMTP, um, you know, for example, Office 365 uh, connection information, and you're going to get that. Um, and the other thing is this extension actually has a lot of pre-built-in ones. So if you have something from this list, for example, you have a Yahoo Mail, you can just click here on load and I'll actually load it in. Um, so it's really simple. There's a lot in this list here that helps. A lot of, really a lot of popular ones, okay? Uh, so for example, SendGrid, which we're gonna have another video later, Mandrill, there's a lot, a lot of pop popular ones, Amazon SCS. Um, so once you do that, it's actually going to autofill that in. And then what you're gonna do mostly, in most cases, is only fill up the username, which is your full email address and the password. Once you do that, if you do that successfully, you're gonna click here and you're gonna click on the test now. But before you do that, you need to know one thing about SMTP. 
because you're authenticating, you're actually confirming that you can send emails on behalf of this email, you're going to need to, to actually send the emails from this email. You can't use S you cannot use SMTP to log in via this email but send from a different one. So for example, if I'm using my SMTP to log in from sales at, uh, I cannot send from info at or admin at or, or customer service at. So the downside of using SMTP is you have to send the, the authentication uh, email you use, you have to send from that, okay? Uh, so that, that's one thing. The other uh, downside is uh, SMTP obviously it depends on which one. For example, Office 365 has limitations. So if you're a growing website, um, you might have like a limit of like 500 emails to be sent per day or something like that. So this is why I mentioned bigger businesses can use the third parties to actually send a lot more emails. Okay, so what are you going to do here? You're going to actually have to send from. So I'm going to take this email and I'm going to go to my store configuration. I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to go here to the section here called store email addresses. So I need to make sure that all my email addresses are being sent from that email. And if not, it's not going to work. Uh, so uh, you got to set that up. So all the emails you want to send from, make sure you put in that email that you're sending from. Okay. So now if I go back here, I can go back here and I can test right now and I can test and I can send it, for example, to my, let's say my email. My email is Ori at. Okay. And I can click on test now. And if you do that, it's actually going to verify. Okay, so let's just check that we get a correct uh, notification. And then once that's correct, that's it. I'm good. So you can check your inbox. You can look at the email. I'm going to do one more experiment just to show you show you what's going on. So um, let's go here. Let's say I want to create a new account. Okay, so let me go here. And I want to create a new account. And I want to do this. So a transactional email will be sent based on uh, obviously registering. That's one of the transactional emails. Okay, and let's say I'm registering right now. Okay, I already have this email. So let me register with a different email. Okay, so let's go to info. Okay, so if I register successfully, I'm going to get an email to my inbox. Oh, this one I also have. Sorry, guys. Um, let me do this. Let me send, for example, to... Let me send to Seth. Okay, so now when I do that, I'll have it. So the last thing I wanted to show you about this extension in particular is a lot of the SMTP extensions, they have logs. Um, so addition, in addition to just sending things, you also have a section here that you can actually keep a log, keep a track of all the emails sent. And in particular, you can see the ones that are actually being uh, delivered or not delivered, etc. So you can see this. For example, I just uh, registered with Seth's email and you can see it's successful. And so in this extension, you can resend, you can delete it from the logs, and you can actually view how the email looked, right? Um, so it's a nice way to keep things in track. So this extension just has a simple um, configuration that you can set up the logs. Do you want to keep the logs, which obviously we have yes in this example, and how long do you actually keep it for? So after 10 days, it's gonna start to clean the logs. This is just a nice extra feature for debugging things. Uh, I like to keep it on because sometimes uh, maybe there might be an issue uh, or uh, and you can debug things, right? It's just a, a easy way to log things and know. That's it, so I hope you enjoy this video. We're gonna make another one just for SendGrid, which is kind of the most popular one, but there's many third parties to do. Uh, hope you enjoy this video, and we'll be making many, many more. Thank you, guys.